Hey everybody and welcome to Stock Abilities. In this video I'm going to tell you how to speed up your Thinker Swim, how to help with memory issues, and a lot of other plethora of common problems troubleshooting with Thinker Swim. So if you don't want to call that technical support number, make sure to watch through this whole video and I'm going to be covering each and every aspect that I found that has helped me and or has been recommended to me by technical support in the past and you know through other data and things like that just to make everything work more efficiently. So make sure to watch through the whole video to get the whole impact and every little step along the way. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more videos just like this. I do other thinkorswim tutorials as well. So just subscribe and let's get started here. Uh, basically one of the most important things that you'd want to make sure when you're using, you know, thinkorswim is that your computer can actually handle that data and one of the biggest concerns is that often you don't have enough RAM, uh, your video card isn't the best. Generally the video card doesn't matter so much. Generally the RAM is the more important and obviously virtual memory kind of important there to have because you're continually processing new information. Something else to consider that a lot of people tend to overlook is your ISP, your internet speed, and obviously if you're bogged down or you're lagging or you're sharing the internet with a bunch of other people, that data information, since it's continually updating every second, can end up slowing down and bogging down your computer more. So make sure when you're doing trading that you're more the priority one on the connection. Uh, you know, direct landline can help, things like that. Uh, less monitors, you know, just more focused on your key component, your computer or what have you that you might be utilizing has the best processing power that it could possibly have for this. In most cases, it's not super, super big of an issue, but if you're using something uh, beyond Windows 7, you're going to have some lag issues, whether you're up to, get, up to date with the max of whatever you might be utilizing. I'm going to jump into the next step here. That's something, uh, you know, I mentioned a little bit earlier with the continual updates and things like that, is that you'd want to, in the general settings, when you go into Thinkorswim, you click the settings button, and you go to the general tab and system, and you want to lower the uh, quote speed if you're, you know, if you're a long-term trader or if you're a swing trader, you really don't need a real-time delay, uh, real-time no delay, you know, it really depends on how you trade. Obviously, if you're sort of like a day trader, you want it closer to the more real time, but you don't really need a real time like, you know, with a max delay of three seconds should be sufficient. You don't really need an instant amount of data flowing in for you. And in some cases, depending on your processor speed, that instant might end up lagging the Thinkorswim platform more than you'd actually expect. Going to jump into the next one here. Something that's not really covered in a lot of other videos is that the look and feel, your display, your font size, and all of that kind of stuff, you know, graphical things can affect things. The amount of gadgets, uh, you know, the amount of charts that you have open all at once can affect your speed as well because you're processing more data all at once. Less gadgets, less charts, the more efficient it should theoretically run. Color scheme won't really matter that much. I feel the spacing might affect things a little bit. Uh, and, you know, menus, it depends how often you're flipping through them. Probably not a super big thing, but these little things can help add a little bit more speed. Uh, one of the other more common, commonly mentioned is essentially the user GUI. And a user GUI basically holds all of your uh, user graphic uh, interface setup type of stuff. You want to make sure you make a backup of this kind of stuff afterwards just in case. But essentially, by utilizing the deletion of this folder, you're essentially resetting the settings for Thinkorswim. And in turn, it should clear out any clogged issues with the, you know, the system in itself. Sometimes your, your Thinkorswim might crash and then you're trying to reload it back up. And you might get some glitches or some issues. And this is a highly recommended thing by Thinkorswim is to delete this folder, simply reopen uh, Thinkorswim, and there you go, you're all set to go. Uh, other thing here recommended, I'll mention it in the description below, but there's specific settings you can adjust and reset your uh, virtual machine settings in order to make it run more efficiently 
you kind of clear out a, it's kind of like clearing out the cache of your computer sort of in a way and in the description below i'll cover the specific settings but you just simply copy a certain type of code into the notebook uh, the notepad file here and you update that file into that and it'll re kind of reset things for you doesn't always help but it's just another step just check out in the description below for that code one of the other more important things here is that uh if you're having some issues what what have you uh simply ending your task abruptly ending thinkorswim clearing out every associated thing with thinkorswim in the task manager can help but something you can also do is close out any background processes any apps that you're not really actively running in order to optimize your speed for that particular application in thinkorswim's case it collects up virtual memory over time so sometimes if you let's say you've had thinkorswim running for a week straight you never closed it out simply ending the application abruptly and then reopening it the fresh start often can clear out that you know virtual memory clog up uh, other things that tend to clog up a lot is google chrome so if you have chrome open or you have another browser open and you've had it open for weeks months whatever they all eat up individual bits of virtual memory and that in turn can affect the speed of your computer and can in turn affect your thinkorswim platform next up here kind of depends which ones you're using whether you're using windows 7 windows 10 so on and so forth essentially what you want to be doing is clearing out your cache you can adjust this in windows 10 uh, it's called storage sense and or something else depending on which version you're using and you can clear out that cache you, you can get it set to do it on you know a daily basis or whenever you're running low on disk space you know these kind of clearing out caches can help in re you know making the process run smoother for thinkorswim and or pretty much any other applications on your computer pretty straightforward not a lot to that it's basically like clearing out a trash can or you know a dumpster what have you that's getting filled up now some other little steps here you know this is more of a broad windows 7 recommendations you want to delete programs you never use that clogs up space you want to limit how many programs are running up on startup obviously if you have a lot of programs that run on startup and then you forget to close them when you open thinkorswim platform that's going to bog down things a little bit uh, defragmenting a hard disk and cleaning up your hard disk kind of some of the cache cache i was explaining to you with the adjustment of the memory on your computer things like that uh, less programs to run all at a given time less visual effects uh, you start control panel performance information tools performance information and tools again and then adjust visual effects and then adjust for best performance and so on and so forth you can adjust it however you want uh, other thing obviously didn't really mention it earlier but sometimes the best fix you can do is simply restarting your computer and that in turn can you know if it was just bogged down because of all the virtual memory and all the you know a collection of that over the period of a long period of time it gets boggy and just simply restarting can fix that sometimes you might get a little bit of a bug that kind of continues on and on and expands eventually potentially not necessarily crashing your computer but causing things to be slow while it's continually trying to process that aspect yeah you know adding more memory more memory means more speed to your computer more processing power means you know more processing power so your computer will be able to process things better sometimes your viruses and spywares can trigger the thinkorswim platform to not work it might be detected as a virus it might block certain parts of thinkorswim obviously that is something to keep in mind you know viruses in general too they come in and spyware and things like that you want some kind of security to prevent against that which can also be putting your thinkorswim data at risk and or just slowing your computer down and of course virtual memory I already mentioned uh, start computer properties advanced system settings performance settings virtual memory change uh, change the paging file system and it goes on a little steps here and obviously how this is processed for your virtual memory kind of depends on your computer this could be a good thing to do or a bad thing to do but you can try it out see if it helps speed up your thinkorswim platform based on the windows 7 settings we're going to jump into windows 10 now 
which a lot of you are probably what you what are you using today. Uh, you can go opaque, uh, essentially less processing that it's going to be utilizing, less graphical. Whoa, <laughs> scroll down a little too quick there. Uh, no special effects. Uh, start system. Uh, go bare bones. Turn it all off there. Pretty straightforward. Go advanced settings, performance settings, adjust for best performance, disable startup programs. I already mentioned this before. Pretty easy to find. Start task manager, click startup, more details, and disable. You could do the startup impacts. Uh, you know, just make sure that you don't have a lot of stuff opening all at once and you don't have a lot of background processes. Brought this up early in the video, but figured. I'd bring it up again just as a reminder. Find and fix the problem. You can run on Windows Troubleshooter. Go through the steps here. I'm um, not going to go into too many details because I'll have that in the description below for you to check out uh, these different websites to follow the steps step by step if you want to follow if you're still having problems. Uh, but uh, you start control panel, security and maintenance, troubleshoot common computer problems, and you run, the, run this and then... Uh, kind of fixes those little problems on the technical end of things. You've reduced the boot, boot menu, timeout speed, uh, computer sets up, gives you time to like, gives you time to do things like uh, start Windows in safe mode. You can have shave a few seconds off your startup time by changing the boot menu timeout, which is set to 30 seconds by default. So you can go to basically start control panel, system, that settings and start up and recovery and click settings and you get right there and it brings you right to that menu there. You yeah, can have little tips and tricks if you want to do that from Windows. You can check, click it on and off. Not really beneficial to the Snickerswim uh, tutorial to help speed it up. Uh, you got run disk cleanup. Mentioned that with the cache. Uh, clean up system files. You're pretty straightforward. You clear out the cache. You're all set to go. It's disk cleanup. Been around forever. Uh, bloatware. You don't want all this crapware on your computer. It can slow down your process on your computer. You know, sometimes uh, Windows 10, Windows 7, Microsoft is kind of, I wouldn't say notorious to do this because a lot of other people do this, but they add basically promotional software and games and things like that where they make a deal with the uh, software company, so on and so forth, where it's default installed on your computer when you get it. This is bloatware. You don't really need it. You can uninstall all that bloatware from, you know, the start of the boot up of your computer, especially if you buy a retail rather than, you know, a pre-made computer or make it yourself. And then, of course, uh, power saver planned. If your battery is low, that is something else to consider if you're on a laptop, things like that. You want to make sure that you're, you have enough charge on your laptop, enough charge on whatever you're utilizing. If you're just using a desktop, this isn't as important, obviously. And I mentioned the restarting the computer as well. I'm not going to get into that again. This is about all I wanted to cover in the Thinkorswim. Uh, kind of like a tutorial for helping you to speed up the platform and memory problems. All those kind of fun things. Not so fun if you're the one experiencing them. But just a quick recap, you know, requirements. You know, the quote speed. Uh, pretty simple here. Look and feels. Uh, user GUI deletion. VM options updates, uh, ending any tasks that you might be running in the background or on the side or whatever that aren't really needed for the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, basically setting your settings to clear out your cache at, at a, after a certain amount of time. Uh, all these different fun settings for basically basic Windows updates, fixing, so on and so forth. The other thing I didn't mention is Sometimes you have a pending Windows update that might be lagging or bogging things down, so turning something like that off while you're trading might be a good idea, and then picking it up to you know finish whatever update overnight. But and then you got Windows 10 steps too. So putting these all together, if you are still having problems in the end, let me go back to where is it here? I uh, don't have that in the tabs here, but. Essentially, you can go back to the Thinkorswim. When you open the Thinkorswim platform, uh, essentially there's a spot at the bottom left with a little settings button, and you can change the uh, data, so on and so forth, that it processes for the application by reducing that or adjusting that, depending on you know the you know your computer specifically can help a lot as well. 
There's a specific number the, for the technical support, which I'll link to in the description below that can help you as well. And obviously, in the end, if none of this works, the best thing you can do is simply uninstall the Thinkorswim platform completely. Make sure to clear out all the older files in that, you know, in the same folder for the user GUI and same folder for the uh, virtual op. Uh, what was it called? The uh, the yeah the VM options virtual machine options uh, file here and resetting all that. Make sure to clear just everything out in the end and uninstall a complete reinstall from scratch. And usually that would fix it. If you're still experiencing problems, the best, really the only thing left to do is call Thinkorswim. In some cases, you just might not have the computer specs to handle it. That's a very, very unlikely case because even most basic modern computers can handle Thinkorswim. The only other thing that you might want to consider doing is calling, you know, your internet service provider that might be having difficulty processing that data for whatever the reason. But if you don't live in a rural area, if you're more of an urban area, that's generally not going to be an issue because speeds are ridiculously high. And Thinkorswim really doesn't need that much speed in order to process and utilize their platform. So just some other things to consider. Uh, if you have any other questions about it, if you're experiencing some other problem, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer that and make sure to share in the comments below if you want to see any other videos about Thinkorswim, the tutorials, so on and so forth. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're still listening to this and you have not yet. And make sure to like the video as well. I'll see you guys all later on. Thank you for listening in and have a great day.